Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the remainder theorem and the factor theorem. Now, let's go ahead and just take a look at the remainder theorem first. It says, when a polynomial p of x is divided by a linear factor x minus k until a constant remainder of r is obtained, then p of k is actually equal to r. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at the proof of that. Now, what we can say is that p of x divided by x minus k, if we do this by the long division method, then we're going to come out with a quotient of x plus a particular remainder divided by x minus k. Okay? Now, if I go ahead and multiply both sides by x minus k, then I get p of x is equal to q of x, or the quotient polynomial of x, times it by that factor x minus k plus r. Now, what happens is that if we actually go ahead and substitute k in for x, Notice that what we have here is q of k times by k minus k plus r. k minus k, of course, is going to be 0, so therefore p of k is equal to r. Now, what exactly is happening here? Now, let's take a look at a uh, specific example. It says p of x is going to be equal to x squared minus 4. So here's our x squared minus 4 function. And divide by x minus 1. Now, what I'm going to use is synthetic division. So what we come out here is a remainder of negative 3. Now the interesting thing is that if we actually go ahead and take p of 1, which is exactly the same value that we have here, then that of course is going to give us 1 squared minus 4, which is negative 3. So notice that the remainder and the value of the function when we divide by this particular value k is going to equal to the remainder. Now, let's see where that, where that is as well. If we take a look at this particular graph, if we were to go ahead and take the value of the function at 1, then the y value, which is negative 3, is exactly the same remainder when we divide this particular polynomial by that factor. Okay, So that's basically what's happening here. Now, let's just do another one. It says, let's say, for example, we divide by x plus 3, again, using synthetic division here. Okay, we have the remainder coming up to 5. Now, if we go ahead and take the polynomial, evaluate that at x is equal to negative 3, then notice that what's happening is that we come up with the value of 5, which is the remainder when we divide the polynomial by x plus 3. So notice that the value of the polynomial is actually going to give you the remainder by dividing by the linear factor x minus k. Okay, so the most important one, of course, is going to be this one. What if we go ahead and divide by x minus 2? Well, we know for a fact that the function is going to have a 0 or a root at x is equal to 2. So what we should come up with is a remainder of 0. And so notice that that's exactly what we come up with as well. So what the, what the remainder theorem is then saying is that if we go ahead and substitute any particular value of k into the polynomial, that would yield the remainder of the polynomial when the polynomial is divided by that x minus k factor. Okay. So then we come across what is called the factor theorem. So the factor theorem says k is a zero of p of x. So notice we're talking about a particular zero value now. If and only if x minus k is a factor of p of x. So one definite and key application of that is that if we find out that p of k is equal to zero, then we know that k is a root of p of x. And therefore, k, x minus k has to be a factor of P of x. Okay, and let's go ahead and take a look at a particular application of that as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at that example. Now, when we have 2x cubed plus x squared plus ax minus 5, and we take that polynomial and divide it by x plus 1, let's say that the remainder becomes negative 8. What is the value of a? Now, 
couple of ways that we can do this, and we'll just show two ways. We can go through the whole synthetic division to go ahead and determine that the remainder, in this case, is negative 5 minus the quantity a plus 1. Now, since we know that that is the remainder, and the remainder here is also saying that it's negative 8, then we can go ahead and find out that, in fact, a is equal to 2. Now, the other method that we can use is we can use this remainder theorem here, which says that the, the polynomial evaluated at negative 1 is going to be equal to the remainder. So here's our initial statement right here, that the polynomial at negative 1 is equal to negative 8. Let's go ahead and substitute negative 1 into the polynomial here to come up with 2 times by negative 1 to the third, plus negative 1 squared, plus 8 times negative 1 minus 5, and of course that has to be equal to negative 8. So if we go through the math, again we're going to come up with the value of a is equal to 2. So, just to wrap up again, the remainder theorem is going to be helpful for us to determine a particular value, say for example, a particular parameter a, if we know what this polynomial is divided by, so long as that is a linear, fac linear factor, and we know what the remainder is. And more in general, is if we go ahead and take a polynomial and divide by a factor x minus k, then if we go ahead and determine what the remainder is, the remainder will actually be the polynomial evaluated at the value k. Okay, the factor theorem again is such that k is a zero of p of x if and only if x minus k is a factor of p of x. And the most important result of that is if we know that p of k is equal to zero, then x minus k has to be a factor of the polynomial. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take a look at some of these problems later in class and take any questions that you may have at that time as well. See you later. Bye-bye.